we're on our way to Carrollton, Georgia. We're going to visit the final resting place of one of Hollywood's most beautiful Spitfire redheads. The actress is Susan Hayward. Susan was born to Edith Mariner on the 30th of June, 1919, according to newspaper accounts. Others say it was 1917. But we know that it was in Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York. Her father was named Walter, and her mother was named Ellen Pearson Mariner. She had an older sister and brother. Her sister was named Florence, and her brother was Walter Jr. They called him Wally. She often talked about how poor the family was when she was growing up, and how her and Wally would collect newspapers and bottles to sell for recycling to help the family out. She said she was sometimes made fun of by other kids for wearing some of the same clothes to school so much, and walking with a limp from being hit by a car when she was seven. She said she was the first girl in her neighborhood to have a paper route. When she was 12 years old, she was given a part in a school play. The kids all took notice, and so did Edith. She believed that performing was her way to be accepted. In 1935, Edith graduated from the commercial high school at the age of 18, and by that time her limp had almost disappeared, and her flaming red hair was exactly what the talent agencies and modeling agencies were looking for, because colored photographs were just becoming popular. And in 1937, the Thornton Modeling Agency was able to place Edith in the Saturday Evening Post magazine. Her picture was seen or spotted by a representative of David O. Selznick, the producer of Gone with the Wind. He was looking for actresses to audition for the part of Scarlett O'Hara. Selznick offered Edith a chance to audition. He sent her two tickets to Hollywood for her and her sister Florence. And of course, the part went to Vivian Lee, but it was an introduction to Hollywood for Edith. Florence finally went back home, but Edith said she liked orange juice, so she thought she'd stay. She found herself a manager, and she was soon signed to a six-month contract. By this time, she also had her name changed to Susan Hayward. After bit parts and being released, she changed studios and things began to pick up, get better. For in 1944, she married Jess Barker against her mother's wishes and also everyone else's advice. The next year in 1945, the twins were born, Timothy and Gregory. Although Jess was a leading man when they met, things began to change. Her career began to bloom and his began to fade. The next few years were turbulent to say the least, ending in a divorce and child custody battles. In the meantime, in 1947, Susan won an Academy Award nomination for Smash Up with Eddie Albert. Then again, two years later, another nomination, My Foolish Heart with Dana Andrews. And three years later, in 1952, another nomination with a song in my heart with Roy Calhoun. In 1954, two very important things happened to Susan Hayward. She finally was divorced from Jess Barker and had complete custody of her twin boys. Although 
the feud was still going on. Next, she was co-star with John Wayne in the ill-fated movie, The Conqueror. The location was picked by Dick Powell, one of the producers. Most of the filming was done in Snow Canyon, Utah, a few miles from the town of St. George. The cast and crew were on location from June to August in 1954, and the movie was released in 1956. The location, unfortunately, was only 137 miles downwind from the U.S. nuclear testing site at Yucca Flats, Nevada. Everyone knew that the location was a hot spot for radiation fallout, but was assured by the government that it was perfectly safe. To make matters worse, 60 tons of radioactive red sand was hauled back to the studio in California for further filming. Soon the movie was forgotten about by all the stars. They went on to bigger and better projects. But years later, it was discovered that 91 out of the cask and crew of 220 that had worked on The Conqueror had developed some form of cancer, including many of its stars. John Wayne contracted lung, throat, and stomach cancer. After a long, hard battle, he died in June of 1979. According to one of his sons, he was cheerful right up until the end. Dick Powell, producer and director, and the one who actually picked the location for the film. Because the red sand in Utah favored the Asian, Asian sand of Genghis Khan. Powell died the 2nd of January in 1963 of lung cancer. He was 58 years old. Supporting actress, Agnes Moorhead, passed away of uterine cancer in 1974. She had stated that everyone in this picture has died of cancer. And it's been reported that on her dying bed, she told her best friend, Debbie Reynolds, I should have never taken that part. Supporting actor, Pedro Armendariz, was diagnosed with liver cancer only four years after the filming of The Conqueror. While acting in another picture from Russia with Love in June of 1963, Pedro was informed that his cancer and it was lethal and given only a few weeks or months to live. He suffered through the final scenes of From Russia with Love so that his family could receive his paycheck. Pedro and his only wife, Carmen, were in a hotel room when Pedro asked his wife to go get him a hamburger. While she was gone, he shot and killed himself. It was the 18th of June, 1963, and he was 51 years old. Other cast members that succumbed to cancer, like John Hoyt, the famous character actor, who died of lung cancer in 1991. And Jeannie Gearson died of breast cancer on February the 2nd in 1992. We're now traveling east on Interstate 20 from Atlanta. And on exit 19, take Highway 113 south for about four miles or so. And look for the sign that says Old Center Point Road. And also the sign that says Our Lady of Perpetual Help.
Also in 1955, Susan was nominated again for an Academy Award for I'll Cry Tomorrow, with it, again with Eddie Albert. And in April of 1955, Susan's mother received a call from her that same year that she was nominated for I'll Cry Tomorrow. Her mother received this call saying, I can't take it anymore. But don't worry, mother. You'll be well cared for. In a panic, Ellen called the police. They broke through the patio doors of her Sherman Oaks home. They found Susan passed out on the floor with empty sleeping bottles scattered. Not waiting for an ambulance, they rushed her to the hospital. Later on, Jess Barker stated that they had had a heated argument and that he, he had said some terrible things to Susan. Days later, as she was leaving the hospital, reporters asked if she was finally through with Jess. Her only comment was, that's what the lady said. Two years later, in 1957, Susan slipped off and married Floyd Eaton Chalkley in Phoenix, Arizona. Eaton Jockley and Susan had met at a Christmas party and become inseparable. Chockley had been a federal agent and an attorney. He was also a business owner. He owned a Cadillac dealership in Carrington. And he also owned a farm and ranch. He had divorced his first wife in 1950. He had two daughters with her. Eaton and Susan became a permanent fixture around Carrollton, where they lived for the next nine years until his death. Susan was accepted in Carrollton, not as the famous movie star Susan Hayward, but as Mrs. Eaton Chalkley. She was often seen driving a pickup going into town to pick up supplies for the farm, which they called Chalkmar for Chalkley and Mariner. The Chalkleys donated 13 acres of their farm to build a Catholic church, Our Lady, or Perpetual Help. Their home was across a road in the distance from the church. The Chalkleys seemed happy and content. Susan didn't work as much in Hollywood, but when she did, she made a splash. Because one year after their marriage in 1958, she finally won the Academy Award for I Wanna Live with Simon Oakland. Living in Carrollton and commuting to different locations for movies became a way of life for the Chalkleys. But in 1966, Eaton Chalkley became ill. He had been in poor health for some time with hepatitis that he had caught during the war. And Susan had been caring for him all this time. She was making a film in Italy when he got sick. Filming stopped. He spent the next three weeks at the Holy Cross Hospital, but he died at home in Carrollton a week later. He was 56 years old. This is Our Lady of Perpetual Help Church. Straight ahead, close to the church, is where they, the church that they had both helped start. It's where Susan buried him. He was the first person to be buried at this church. 
Susan actually designed the layout for this cemetery. And they both had bought this white statue on one of their trips and gave it to the church. Her happiest times was spent at this farm. After Eden's death, Susan went into a deep depression, always wearing black, and one of her sons stated that he believed she'd become obsessed with her dead husband. She sold a farm, stating that she couldn't bear to live in their house without him. She spent some time in Florida, but finally ended up and returned back to California. In 1967, Susan had a small part in Valley of the Dolls with Barbara Perkins, Patty Duke, and Sharon Tate. And in 1972, Susan made her last film, Revengers with William Holden. She had been experiencing headaches all this time. She checked in the hospital for tests under the name of Margaret Redding. She was informed that she had brain cancer and given only a few months to live. However, a year later in 1973, she was determined to present the Academy Award for Best Actress with co-host Charles and Heston. Although she had lost her flaming red hair from chemotherapy and had to wear a wig and her right side was paralyzed except for her arms, Heston helped her on the stage and off the stage. She had been experiencing seizures and had to load up on medication just to be able to make the presentation. She had a seizure as soon as she reached her automobile that night. In 1974, she revealed to the public that she had cancer. According to her son, Tim Barker, Susan had lost weight and her ability to swallow food. She had lost her hair and was reduced to laying in a fetal position. Her cancer had spread throughout her body. It wasn't pleasant, he stated. He was convinced along with the children of John Wayne and the children of Dick Powell, that she had received cancer from radiation due to the government's nuclear test site while filming The Conqueror. Why the government, he says, didn't warn us, I don't know. It might have saved a lot of people a lot of misery. On March the 14th, 1975, Susan had a massive seizure at home in California. Newspapers stated that she was 55 years old. Others say 57. Other accounts state that she was born in 1917, which would have made her 57. There is no dates given on her grave markers. Susan was transported back to Carrollton to be buried by her husband, Eaton Chalkley. They share a memorial plaque, and her part simply reads, Mrs. F. E. Chalkley. And a smaller plaque on the ground reads, Susan Hayward Chalkley. 
Her star for the Hollywood Walk of Fame is located at 6251 Hollywood Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. <laughs>